everyone my name is Farhan and I've been thinking about making this video for a long time but you know I never really uh, got it through or thought it through I guess um, so rundown I've been self-publishing and publishing for the last five years I've made it my full-time job my livelihood and I really want to share some information that I wish I knew when I first started, you know, to help people who are self publishing now. So here are 10 things I wish I knew before I started self publishing. Number one is know and research the different publishing sites that are out there. Um, this includes the two big ones, Ingram Spark and Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing or KDP. Um, I, I go with KDP personally because they offer well a free service and um now the issue is they don't offer widespread distribution well mostly because it's amazon and people don't or bookstores don't really want to buy from amazon so amazon kdp made the most sense for me it was very easy very simple interface is very smooth to use um ingram spark i don't really have a lot of experience with but I know a lot of people that went with it. It's good for hardcover books, getting your book distributed a lot more, um, but it's not as well known in the author space or most authors don't really use it. They just kind of stick with KDP because Amazon is kind of like the bread and butter. They kind of get your book out there more so than any other self-published services. So second thing on my list was formatting. Um, I wasn't really good at formatting, nor did I know how to find the formatting on KDP on Kindle Direct Publishing. There are format templates for the size of book you want, right? And so you kind of download that and, you know, paste all your work into that. And obviously look up videos on how to format your book properly because I didn't and that led to a whole big issue when I got my books where words are kind of bleeding onto the next page, poems are separated. Um, it just, it looked ugly. So definitely format your book properly and make sure it is completely and perfectly formatted by the time your book is published because you don't want your customers and readers getting a book that looks bad on the inside so number three on my list was a writing program i use now religiously and a writing program i wish i had gotten earlier to make my life easier right and that is scrivener um in scrivener you can format your book very easily you can store all your you know, your little scenes, your scripts, your poems, whatever you want to work on, you just store it right in there and you can organize it in a way where it's completely in order, right? And that is the best thing I could have done for myself because now I've written, I think, three or four poetry collections in there and it has blessed me immensely. Like, I can just hit compile and all my poems are compiled and I don't have to do extra formatting or extra work if I just want to look at my book as a whole and I can go back and edit right then and there. Also, they use Dropbox as like a backup. So in case, God forbid, your your file gets like corrupted or um, deleted, it's always going to be on a backup in Dropbox. So I definitely recommend Scrivener. Um, every writer I know recommends Scrivener. So get on it. I wish I got it earlier, but I'm glad I got it now. Number four on my list is get an advertising plan kind of set and ready to go when you're ready to publish. That means Facebook, if you still use it, um, Amazon AMS, which is what I used for my first two books specifically um, because it got my book out a lot more to a lot more readers. Um, Twitter, Instagram, and most notably, I'm pretty sure you've seen this video, like videos from authors about TikTok, right? Get on TikTok, um, get on every social media because sadly these days you kind of need social media to kind of promote your author profile and your books. Um, and while it kind of does suck, we need to do it 
to get our words out these days. So definitely use AMS if it works for you. That's what I recommend. Facebook works for a lot of genres. I haven't had any luck with Facebook, but if you if you find luck with it, then great, right? Use it. Newsletters work too, so and mailing lists. So if you find that you're good at writing newsletters and you can build a mailing list mailing list really fast, then do that because that has the best organic sales out of mostly everything besides TikTok, right? But yes, get on every social media, find out advertising ways as best as you can. And you know what? If you have a plan set before you publish, then you'll find a lot more success than you won't. Number five on my list is get a good book cover or finalize your book cover and make sure it's in genre right that specifically make sure it's in your genre right um i have a lot of experience with this um when i first published my first book euphoria in 2018 that book has gone through i think five or six cover changes and to this day i still want to change its cover so bad because i'm just not satisfied with how the book looks i feel like it didn't really capture what i wanted what i wanted it to capture and there's a couple of times when my agent was like, hey, this book cover isn't doing well, let's change it. Hey, this book cover isn't doing well, let's change it. So it's just like a lot of things go into it and make sure your book cover is in genre too, because that's very, very important. Um, look at other book covers in your genre, whether you're publishing fantasy, poetry, fiction, um, nonfiction, look at how they are so you can kind of not mimic it, but kind of fall in line with that because when readers look for your book they're looking for a book that kind of looks like what they're used to reading right you don't want to get a poetry book that looks like a fantasy book or you don't want to get a fantasy book that looks like a poetry book cover right some maybe you do some readers will but not the mass audience right so it's make sure the cover is good one and make sure it's in the genre or aligning with the genre you're focusing on see what other successful authors use and kind of follow that template or that direction oh here's another thing this is number six that i have a lot of experience with and that i wish i got done earlier so this is getting your book edited um pref like preferably by someone who is a professional i didn't get my book edited my first two books i did not get edited they were not some mistakes but they were more so bad punctuation right so it's readers notice that readers notice that you don't put your best foot forward sometimes or sometimes you just miss it and that's fine right as an author you work on a lot of stuff and you just miss some things um that's why beta readers are important or editors are important right for my third book prayers of my youth i specifically hired an editor that worked for a poetry that worked for a poetry um publisher and he edited my book and my book came out better than I wanted it to, right? It, the mistakes were gone, punctuation gone. And not only did he fix all my grammatical errors, but he also gave my book, you know, you know, options to be better. Whether that is, hey, you can add a better you can add better imagery to this, or you can do something better with this line, right? You can make a better ending to this po poem, right? So definitely get your book edited, get more eyes on your books because you want your book to be the best it is by the time you publish it. Number seven on my list is actually finish your book because I didn't. And I know it feels like I'm just saying, everything that I made a mistake with, but that's like, that's the video for it, right? I made a lot of mistakes when I first started publishing and I don't want you to do the same. Don't rush in publishing your book, which is what I did in Euphoria. I published it within two weeks. Why? Because I really wanted to get my book out before I started like student teaching, right? So actually take your time with your book, finalize your book, make sure you don't take poems out put poems in put images in with my first book i kept on putting more and more images in after years and more and more poems in and formatting it again because i just wasn't happy with the way it looked i felt like i could have done better with it and most of my readers had different editions of my book because of that so 
I would recommend actually finishing your book, finalizing your book, putting your time, putting time into your book. Because if you don't, then readers will notice that you're not putting your best foot forward. And you know, as an author, you what not everything you create should be perfect, but everything you create should have your best effort into it. You know, you should put your best effort into it. So definitely do that. Finalize your book. Learn from my mistakes, please. All right. So number eight, um, focus on getting reviews. This is after your book is published. You hit publish. You wait the 72 hours for your book to be published. Everything's perfect. The people, people buy your book when you first release it, like get reviews, right? Because you need reviews, whether that's on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, um, obscure bookstores, indie bookstores, right? You need reviews for your book to be successful, right? When someone first clicks on your book, if they see your book and it has no reviews, people are less likely to buy it right but if it has a couple reviews 100 reviews 50 reviews and those reviews are five stars four stars people are more likely gonna buy it because they want to see what other, they see what other people say about it right and they want to get it when you buy something right when you buy think about how you buy stuff when you buy a book or an an object for your home an object for your home but when you buy something for your house or something you want to use right or a new board game something that i'm into Right. I look at the reviews first and foremost because I want the best thing for myself. I want to see what other people like me are saying, because if people say, oh, this thing sucks, this thing breaks easily. This thing is hard to understand. This book didn't make any sense. Why would I want to spend my money on it? Right. So get reviews done. Make sure you get good reviews. If your book is finalized, it makes sense. You'll get good reviews. Right. Because people are into different things. Right but get reviews as fast as you can, as much as you can, because the more reviews you get, the more likely people will buy your book and organically the book will sell a lot more. Number nine on this list is connect with other writers and support them. Um, in the book, The War of Art, there is a good segment where the author explains that if you want your genre to stay alive and you're currently not publishing, support authors that are in your genre. Whether that means posting up about them, reading them, rating them, um, telling everyone you know to buy their book, support authors in your genre because they are what keep your genre alive when you are not actively publishing in it. So do that, right? These days, a lot of authors are very stingy. They kind of want to stay in their own lane they don't want anyone else to kind of cross into it and that's fine if that's your cup of tea that's not my cup of tea i don't get along with people like that nor do i um get along don't i don't get along with people who don't like you know connecting with different people but connect with authors find other writers in your genre or other authors in general and just support them rate them share their books become friends with these people because you never know how you can help each other in the future you never know who might hit the new york times bestseller and how much how you can help each other right readers love when you help other authors right so that's something that i wish i got to do earlier i wish i connected with more authors earlier right because i didn't um, I was kind of in my own lane. I was that person that was stuck in his own lane. But now I am actively trying to make more friends, actively trying to become friends with authors who, well, are publishing or currently publishing or trying to publish or wanting to publish, right? Do that, right? Support each other and the support will come back to you. The last thing, number 10 on my list is that publishing is a long game, right? I didn't get that when I first started. Publishing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Definitely. You've heard that somewhere, but some people get famous off their first book and that's fine. That's their path, right? Some people get famous off their second, their third. Some people get famous off their ninth or 10th book, right? And that's okay, right? As long as you keep on working on your craft, as long as you don't give up on the industry, right you'll find success in it no matter how long you've been in it right and that's one thing i didn't really get when i first published my first book i thought i was 
supposed to not struggle right then and there i thought i was gonna make the most money as i possibly could i thought i was gonna get the most sales but it didn't work that way and i was confused and when i published my second book that kind of took off a little bit and i was happy and it just everything felt like it made sense it felt like i paid my dues even though i didn't and it was just it felt good but after that i didn't get that it's all highs and lows right you're gonna hit good strides you're gonna you're gonna walk sometimes you're gonna run sometimes you're gonna be up down everywhere that's just how publishing is it's a long game right as long as you keep as long as you keep on creating that's all that matters so focus on that focus on constant creating focus on creating the best things you can create each and every single day or every single month or every single week however long it takes you to create something work on that and it'll come you know no matter if it's your first book fifth book sixth book ninth book tenth book it will come because it's a long game at the end of the day and the longer you stay in it the more success you will find throughout the years you're in it so that's kind of it that's all i really have for this video um if you're an author or you're an aspiring author that has more to add to this or that has more questions please leave them in the comments i'd love to answer them but um until next time i'll catch you